So when you go to get it, so, so I, I, think that, I think it's important to say that mammography has its place, okay, but it's not a perfect tool. And so it means that we have to come up with other solutions. When you go to get a mammogram, you want to know that your mammogram is being read, read by a dedicated mammographer. Okay, there are, and that's probably the most important thing that you can do. It doesn't really matter whether it's digital or not. I think the digital is slightly more sensitive, but that can be both good and bad. I think that the question you asked about some of these larger tumors that may not initially appear on mammogram, I think this comes into the issue um, about magnetic resonance imaging and whether or not that should be used for screening. Let me say categorically there, that MRI is absolutely not the right tool for general screening of the public. We already spend 10 billion a year on mammographic screening, okay? MRI is, um, is at least 10 times more expensive than a mammogram. But there are situations for which MRI screening is appropriate. It's appropriate in the setting when, you, uh, when we think that the traditional means of screening, mammography, don't work. What are those situations? If you have an inherited predisposition to breast cancer and you have an 80% risk of getting breast cancer, and particularly at a young age, MRI is a good test for you. We usually use a cutoff. I, I tend to be a little bit more restrictive about who I recommend an MR for. I like to look at people who have about a 35, 30%, at least 30% risk of getting breast cancer and for whom traditional mammography doesn't work, very dense breast tissue at any age, or people who have lobular carcinoma in situ who may be at risk for lobular cancers, which are also not very well picked up on, on, on traditional screening mammography. Um, I do not think ultrasound has been shown to be a useful uh, screening tool. MRI and mammograms are still the best tests. And the reason why MRIs also cause a problem is because there's a lot of false positives. It's also very hard to go back and find some of these these agents, and you don't want to go to a center that does screening that doesn't have the capability of doing biopsies. Because if you get an MRI in one place, that data is not necessarily transferable to another place, and finding that, that lesion or the, the, the suspicious area on the MR in one place can be very difficult. You'd have to repeat the MR. You want to go to a place that has teams of people that work together and can absolutely do the biopsy. You should not be going to a place that can't do the workup. That's really important. So quality, quality control, make sure they have a record and dedicated personnel. Um, there are numerous studies now, probably seven, that have shown that in women who have inherited breast cancer risk, mammograms often are not sufficiently sensitive. They miss things. That's particularly true probably because those studies include a lot of young women, and younger women generally have denser breasts. Mammograms are known not to be so good. Those studies also show that MRI can find things more often than mammograms. I don't think most of us are yet ready to give up mammograms. We would like to. We'd like to get rid of the radiation. We'd like to get rid of the discomfort. Um, but we don't yet have studies to show that for some women in particular, MRIs are better or mammograms are better. And there may be some women for that too. We have the best data for these women. For many other women, we still don't know for sure when, mam when MRI should be used. And even for our patients at highest risk, we don't yet have studies that show what we demand of all screening studies, not just that they can find more, but that it matters that they find more, that women live longer because of that. We're hopeful that's what we'll show.